so from Teesside, um, straightforward flight across to, to Appleby, uh, about 15 minutes until we overhead the site. As we arrived on scene, Casper was already at the riverbank on the riverside, yes. but it hadn't been there very long. He'd virtually just been rescued by the fire service That's right, as yeah. we landed. But they did have resuscitation started and he was receiving CPR. And there was a first responder there from Appleby, who was a GP, I believe. Yes. And also Theo Weston, who works for GNAS, but had responded via basics, was also there. And he had intubated Casper. They were breathing for him using a breathing tube and, and controlling ventilation into the lungs with oxygen. Uh, and he was getting manual chest compressions at the time. Yeah, those chest compressions were being um, handled mainly by the fire service mm. who were doing a bit of a relay effort so that mm -hmm. nobody got too tired. Um, and then almost immediately on our arrival, uh, we transferred that onto a mechanical chest compression device. And I spoke to Dion, who was the emergency department consultant at the RVI. The reason being I wanted to give them a heads up that we were both coming, and also this, is, this was a child who was severely hypothermic and in cardiac arrest, and that we should consider getting the team over from the Freeman Hospital, who could start uh, what we call ECMO, which is where blood is taken out of the body and warmed and provided with oxygen before being um, delivered back to the body using a pump machine. We changed the battery on the mechanical CPR device As we loaded an helicopter, just prior yes. to going into the helicopter and the benefit of that was that um, from the minute we closed the doors on the helicopter to us arriving in the emergency department he had completely uninterrupted chest compressions and we know that um, that is one of the keys to survival in cardiac arrest where there is as little interruption as possible for the resuscitation efforts to maintain perfusion to the brain and the other vital organs. I remember the flight time taking about 20 minutes, which given where we were in Appleby, given the fact it was such a nice day and the traffic on the road, it shortened that time measurably. It, 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 massive difference in time. Um, <laughs> probably would have taken well over an hour and a half, if not a bit longer from Appleby in that yeah. traffic condition. This was definitely one of those circumstances where uh, having uh, access to a helicopter made a huge difference. I think the whole the whole of this case with Casper just highlights the importance of that chain of survival and cardiac arrest. So right from the early recognition, the early bystander CPR, the early advanced care, to the, the hospital side of the care, mm -hmm. it just shows that all those links in that chain are so important. Mm -hmm. And what we were able to do was, was further bring that advanced care out in the pre-hospital environment, add to the care he was already received on, mm -hmm. on scene, and then rapidly transfer him to that definitive care at the hospital. Mm -hmm. As we got to the RVI, one of the, because we'd been able to pre-alert them and warn them about what was happening on scene and what we felt needed to happen onwardly, the arrangements had already been made and some of the Freeman team were already actually waiting for us as we arrived in the emergency department. So they had a full critical care team there, including paediatricians and intensive care doctors and as well as the emergency department team led by Dion um, and he got good continuity of care from the moment Steve and I handed out handed him over. I think we try and make a difference in every case that we go to but sometimes those differences are very subtle. It's nice when we have these really good positive outcomes to be able to go away and reflect and then come back and actually enjoy what is a much more joyful experience and you know, it's one of the cases that I'll probably remember throughout my career. I think this is this is what the job's all about. This is what we aim to achieve with, with every patient. You want that good outcome. And to, to meet somebody like this, who essentially last time I saw Casper, he, he was being resuscitated, you know, he had no signs of life, he was being resuscitated. And to, to meet him, talk to him, see him walking it, brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic.